fellow collectors and welcome to Long's Toys. Today we are taking a look at the Shoto Super Set for Hyakuju Sentai Gal Ranger. As you can see on the front of the box, all six Gal Rangers are included. Nice shot of all six up here on the top of the box. Over here on this side we have Gal Red and Gal Silver. And then we have the other four over here on this side. Not too much going on the bottom of the box, but if we spin around to the back, it just kind of shows all six of the Gal Rangers with the combined weapon. And then you get a little breakdown of all the accessories here that are included. So the one nice thing about this is that the figures are 100% painted, but the weapons are 100% stickers. So it's probably going to be a bit to get all these stickers applied here. So I'm going to go ahead, get everything out of the box and start getting the stickers applied and we'll take a closer look. Here are the six Gal Rangers out of the packaging, and we'll start right in the center here with Gal Red. And you can see I have him holding all of the weapons put together here. We'll zoom in a little bit on that piece. It's just a really cool piece. Basically how this works is you go ahead and pop this off, and then this slides through this piece here, and then you can go ahead and peg this back in. And this is all stickers. All of the weapons have stickers on them. But the nice thing about this is it comes apart in different pieces. So you kind of like right here is a sticker, and then here, then the center part, then the axe is a separate sticker, then the sword. So you're not expected to put one large sticker down across all of this, which would be kind of impossible. So they actually came out pretty well. For the most part, I think these actually look pretty good, all applied. So I'll put this piece off to the side here, and we will take a look at Gal Red. And the figures are completely painted. Really, really nice. The helmet looks great. Now basically how this works is you have a swivel and a little bit of a ball joint there at the base of the skull and then you have a ball joint at the base of the neck. So you can see how that kind of moves around a lot more down at the base of the neck than at the base of the helmet. You also have kind of a butterfly joint here in the shoulder plus a ball joint for the shoulder. Bicep swivel pretty much 90 degrees there at the elbow. The wrist you can move around because you do, of course, get tons of different hands, which we'll get into later, and they can just peg those in. They're a little difficult because I think what happened here was this was all molded in red and then they had to paint the glove white, and as a result, it kind of makes the peg hole there a little caked with paint, so it can be a little difficult to get these in and out, but just push them in and they will go. Here you can see the little dagger, and that's got a sticker on both sides. You also have different versions of the holster here, the sheath. So this is obviously empty because he's holding the sword, but then they give you versions. Let me see if I can find his. That's not his. This is his. So here's a version of the sword in the holster, which is pretty cool. They also give you a ton of different stickers. So if you want to use the different colored jewels, if you don't necessarily want him to have the red one, you can put the green one in for the gorilla or something like that. So you just kind of have to pick and choose because once you apply a sticker, you would have to put a different sticker over top or try to peel it off which I don't think would work very well. I wish they gave you tons of alternate daggers so that you could apply the stickers for all of them but you kind of have to pick and choose and that's kind of a bummer. Back to the articulation you have a kind of ball joint here in the abdomen and then you also have a ball joint at the waist there. Really nice paint for the belt. I think that all looks really sharp. You have a ball joint for the hip. You can kind of kick out to the side you just have to make sure that this is out of the way. But you can bring this down and kick pretty far out to the side. You have a thigh swivel there. You have over 90 degrees in the knee. And then you have a ball joint in the ankle. So really nice articulation for figures this size. And these of course are standard Shoto size. So not quite 4 inches. Maybe somewhere in the like 3 and 3 quarter inch area. Now for his weapon you actually unpeg the hand. And this replaces the hand. So it just pegs in there just like that. You also have one where the mouth is completely closed. So the one that has the little circle hole in it is so that you can put the uh, baton through for when he holds the, the big weapon right here. But then you have this one where it's kind of closed. So if you wanted to just have his weapon on its own, you have that. And then you also have another option where you kind of have the top of the head. So you can take this and put in just the top and then you can take this hand off and they give you a second hand that has the bottom piece that you can peg in and then you can kind of uh, have him kind of you know put them together like that so he's doing the top and the bottom 
It's kind of hard to get the hand over there to recreate the pose, but I'm sure it's possible. They have a decent amount of articulation, as you can see. But basically, you can do kind of the top and the bottom. So they do give you a lot of options with that. And you can kind of see the fist here is molded in. But it's, it's red, it's not painted white. I'm assuming if they had tried to paint it white, it would probably just look kind of terrible. So they opted not to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and put his fist back in there, and then I'll give him the full version. Here we go. And of course they come with extra hands, and I'll show those all off in a minute, but really, really cool. Now because he's red, he comes with a lot of other accessories, so I'm going to run through those pretty quickly here. He's got this blaster, which looks pretty good. This piece here is molded and painted all in gold. I think it's actually, it might be molded in red and then painted in gold, actually. And then this has a sticker on both sides. And you can see how that kind of has the little can in there peeking out of the mouth. They give you an alternate head. So that you can go ahead and peg this on so that you don't have that piece. Oops, let me align that correctly. There we go. So the mouth is closed and it doesn't have the cannon actually poking out of his mouth. So you have options there, which is nice. But that's a pretty cool accessory. And then you also get the bow for the Falcon. And this is kind of in its closed mode. You can see the two pieces are folded down. And that has two stickers on each side. And then, of course, you have the open mode which has two stickers on each side. That looks really, really good. You can see how this doesn't have any of the orbs loaded in, the jewels. And then we have this one, which has the jewels loaded in and also has, if you look, the sword is laying down across. So you have three versions of the bow, which I think is really cool. That's some really nice attention to detail. I love how they have the version with the sword inserted, the little dagger inserted, I should say. Very, very cool. I really like that a lot. So Red comes with a ton of accessories, but it makes sense because he has the most uh, animals to call and the various accessories that come with them. So that's very, very cool. Very, very nice there. We'll take a look at Silver next. I really like the look of this guy. He looks absolutely fantastic. He's one of my all-time favorite suits. I love the blue matte finish here for the torso and the sleeve. I think that looks fantastic. The helmet looks amazing. Did such a good job there. You can see he has the sword mode here, and then he has the empty holster here on the side. Of course, we have alternate options for this. So here is the sword in the sheath. That's one option. We also have the gun mode. That's an option. And then, of course, we have the pull cue mode. So that's an option. So I think that's really cool. A lot of great options for the weapon there. A lot of great paint applications. He's got all the same articulation as Red, so nothing new there. But just a really great looking figure. And hey, his boots are the right color. What do you know? They also have these pegs on the back here. So if you want to use stands with them, you absolutely can. But this is just a really sharp looking figure. Next up, we'll move to Yellow. He looks great as well. I really like the sword. I think that came out really good. I believe that was two separate stickers. I think this piece here was one sticker and then the actual blade itself was a sticker. And then I've got the dagger in the sheath here on the side. And again, the helmet looks fantastic. All the same articulation as the others. Really cool there. And then he does, of course, have his individual dagger if you would like to take it out of the sheath. Sticker on both sides for that. And then, of course, he's got a, you know, empty sheath option if you want to have him holding the dagger. So that's pretty cool. Next up, we will go with Blue. He's got both of his little tomfas here. These stickers were a little interesting to apply. There's one for each side. I'll take this out of here. But it wasn't too bad. They're a little worse for wear, but they, they went on pretty well. And he holds them very nicely. They just slide into the bottom of the fists here. And he holds them pretty well. Really nice paint applications for this helmet. I think he looks fantastic. He's got the three stripes there. I, again, I have his uh, dagger in the sheath. And he's got all the same articulation as the others. And then here is his dagger with the stickers on both sides. 
So just really, really nice. He's <laughs> a really sharp looking figure. Really love that quite a bit. Next up, we will take a look at Black. Helmet looks fantastic. He's got the two stripes there going all the way around. Sword in the sheath. We have the axe. Looks really great. They even have the attention of having the bison head only on one side, and then it's the back of the bison head on the other side. That's really nicely done. That came out really, really nice. And then, of course, he has his dagger as well. So there we go. But yeah, really, really sharp. I love the little horns. I think that really makes that helmet really, really looks good. And then last but certainly not least, we have white slash pink. And she looks great. Again, the helmet really nicely detailed. All the paint applications are really sharp. I have her holding the dagger here, so I have the empty sheath on the side. And then she has her baton weapon. Now, because she has the kind of soft um, skirt piece, it does hinder articulation for the legs a little bit. You can still get a decent amount of articulation kicking forward, kind of kicking out to the side. So it's not hindered terribly, but uh, it is hindered a little bit. But then the knees, the ankles, that's all the same. Everything in the arms is the same articulation. Torso, waist, that's all the same. And the helmet and the neck and everything. So it's really just the skirt hindering the hip articulation just a little bit. Otherwise, really, really sharp looking figure. Really like this quite a bit. So all six of these look really great. I'm really happy with this set. Uh, the only other things I haven't shown you yet in terms of accessories are all of the hands. There are so many hands. So this is crazy. Let's just go through this real quick. Let me tilt the camera here. So you get a ton of these. This uh, set, this sprue right here, gives us open hands. You get like the what I call the gal hands with the claws. So you can do all of those poses. So you get a set of those. You also get this kind of like set of grasping hands. I don't really think that they're tight enough to actually hold any accessories, but they're just kind of like a set of grasping hands. And that's kind of the same with this. This almost looks like a trigger finger hand, but just not really tight enough to grasp anything. So just kind of like posing hands. So really like three sets of posing hands and then those like uh, animal claw hands, which I really, really like. So you get one, two, three, four, five, six sets of those because you have those for every ranger. So that's really appreciated. And then we have this set over here, which gives us kind of like more grasping trigger finger hands. So these will actually hold the items. And then you have just kind of a normal set of grasping hands. And then you have closed fists. And then, of course, you get one, two, three, four, five, six sets of those as well. So that's really nice. You get a full set. And I've cut some of these off, obviously. Let me see if I have one that I haven't. Yeah. So here we go. So you get a full set of all seven sets of hands for each figure. So that's crazy. I mean, that's 42 sets of hands in this thing, so that's pretty nuts. But I really appreciate the attention to detail. I love the animal kind of claw hands because, of course, that's what Scout Ranger is known for. So I really appreciate that they have those there so you can really get a really great uh, set of poses with all the figures for that. And then, of course, you have all the, like, punching, you know, weapon grasping hands, just posing hands. So many options with this set, so that's just really crazy. But it's a really beautiful set. Honestly, it's a little pricey. I can't remember exactly what it costs, but when you do the math with shipping and middleman fees and all that kind of stuff, each one of these figures comes out to between like 20 and 25 bucks, which is kind of what Hasbro is charging right now for a Lightning Collection figure. So that might seem a little ridiculous because these are kind of closer to 4 inch as opposed to 6 inch. But the paint applications are 100% correct. You have a ton of different posing hand options. You have all these weapons to choose from. Now, yes... You do have to put the stickers on the weapons, and that is kind of a pain in the butt. It did take me quite a bit of time to get all the stickers applied. But they do look really sharp, and if they tried to paint all the weapons as much as I really wish they would, it would dramatically increase the price of the set, so I understand why they can't do that. I would love it if they did, because I would love to just take these completely out of the box and be ready to go, but I understand. I mean, cost, logistics... 
they have to do some stickers. But honestly, they're not hard to apply. They're just time consuming. A lot of the stickers went on really nicely. And the fact that the stickers are kind of segmented so you can put them on, you know, where they go and not have to worry about a giant sticker being misaligned because one little spot was out of place. I really appreciated that. So it's a really great set. I really think all of these figures look fantastic. All of the paint applications look great. You get so many accessories, so many posing hand options. There's just a lot going on with this set. So it is a little bit pricier, but I think it's worth it. I think it's a really great set. All of these look fantastic, and I recommend it. If you have the means, I definitely recommend picking this set up because it's really, really solid. Soto Super, Soto Super, that's not a thing. Shoto Super, that's what I'm trying to say, has been really great so far. They've really been crushing it, honestly. Um, uh, MMPR or Drew Rangers on the way, and we just got teased for Live Man. So this is definitely a line to get into because I really think it's going to be continuing for a while. We've already got about four or five sets at this point. So I don't think they're going anywhere. Get in on the ground floor before these go crazy in the aftermarket. It's a great set. I really, really think this is fantastic, and I'm really excited to have it. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and as always, thank you so much for watching.